And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at free energy and redox reactions. So a positive cell potential um, is going to be associated with spontaneous redox processes. So if we have a positive um, E cell, we would have a spontaneous redox process. Okay. Um, now, what I want you to notice here, though, is that in the equation that we have set up here, although it looks very similar to the one we've used previously, we actually have dropped the cell um, uh, subscript. And uh, the reason why is because the equation above doesn't just apply to voltaic cells. Um, it applies to any redox process that could occur. Okay. Um, so, if you have a positive E value, um, you're going to have a spontaneous process. If you have a negative E value, you have a non-spontaneous process uh, with respect to what we see here. Okay, so we can determine if a reaction is going to be spontaneous or not um, based on our uh, half reactions and our reduction potentials um, and the subsequent uh, cell potential that we calculate for the overall process. Okay, so if we look at the example that they've given us here, um, we have copper being oxidized um, and hydrogen being reduced. Okay, um, so our reduction process is, is um, as we see here, um, and we get our uh, reduction, standard reduction potential from our chart, which is zero. The oxidation process, we go to the standard reduction potential chart, um, and we find that it is 0.34 volts. Okay, we take those values and we subsequently plug them into the appropriate reduction and oxidation processes. Um, Per the equation that we just saw on the previous slide. Okay, we do the math and we end up with a negative 0.34 voltage um, as our cell potential. Okay, and basically a negative value is going indi to indicate a non spontaneous process, um, which tells us basically that this copper uh, metal is not going to react with the acid um, or H. Plus. Um, to give us copper 2 plus ion and H2. Okay, however, the reverse process of the copper 2 plus ion in the presence of hydrogen will give us copper and um, acid in solution. Okay, so we can actually relate cell potential to the free energy. Um, delta G and um, our E value uh, can be used to determine the spontane spontaneity of the reaction. Okay, so the relationship between free energy and um, our cell potential, our EMF, um, at standard conditions is represented by this equation here. So delta G naught is equal to negative N F E naught, okay, where N is your number of moles um, of electrons that have been transferred in the process. F is Faraday's constant, which um, is represented here. Notice it can be uh, expressed in joules per volts or um, coulombs per mole. Uh, so, and that's representing the charge per one mole of electrons, okay, so we're so we also, of course, have our standard cell potential here um, that's included in this equation. Okay, so these are all the components that are now going to allow us to relate um, our free energy to our cell potential. Okay, um, and what we need to understand is that uh, cells, both take cells, galvanic cells, they're going to run in the direction to give a positive cell potential. Okay, a positive cell potential here is mathematically going to give us a negative delta G value, which obviously is the condition for spontaneity. So we can look at our E naught of our cell with respect to this equation and subsequently figure out um, if we have a spontaneous reaction or not. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's apply um, our relationship between delta G naught and our cell, cell potential um, utilizing this equation. So they've given us a specific reaction and they've told us that they want us to find out if the reaction is spontaneous given the following reduction potential. Okay, so the provided reduction potentials that they've given us are going to allow us to calculate our E naught for the cell, so basically our cell, cell potential. Okay, so we need to utilize the skills that we just acquired in order to figure out um, our E naught of our cell. Okay, and very simply what, what we're going to be able to do is look at the oxidation and reduction processes. Okay, so obviously both steps that they've given us here are um, reduction processes, but obviously we know oxidation and reduction is having to occur simultaneously. Okay, so when we go from Cu plus 2 to Cu um, oxidation to 8, 0, that's a reduction process. So this reaction is going to remain the same. Okay, um, when we go to Fe to Fe plus 2, that's an oxidation process. Okay, so this is the equation that's going to get flipped. So the reduction potential over here, um, when we go to flip this equation and sum up the overall equations together, um, this is going to become positive 0.44 um, volts. 
Okay, so if we sum those two processes, okay, uh, 0.34 and positive 0.44, uh, we're going to end up with our um, E cell. Now, another component that we need to look at is how many electrons have been transferred. Okay, so recall that N represents the number of electrons transferred um, between the oxidation and reduction processes. So in this case, two electrons have, are needing are being needed for reduction um, as well as two electrons are given up for that reduction process. Okay, so we have two moles of electrons that are being um, provided or, or exchanged during this process. Okay, um, so we have our moles, we have our um, cell potential that we've calculated, we have our constant, our Faraday's constant here. We plug these values in and we're subsequently going to go ahead and obtain um, our delta G naught value. In this case, our delta G naught value is negative. Uh, a negative delta G means that we have a spontaneous process. Okay, um, and what we needed to make sure that we did was obviously pay attention to any sign changes that would be necessary from our um, standard reduction potentials for our half reactions um, and subsequently derive, you know, which one needs to be flipped or which one needs to be adjusted um, according to the equation that they gave us above. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at how the equilibrium constant K is also related to our cell potential. Um, so we know that the delta G naught is related to K by this equation. We just saw that in the last unit. Okay, um, and we know that delta G naught is also related to um, our moles and Faraday's constant as well as our um, cell potential. Okay, so we can interrelate delta G naught and our E naught value by substitution. Okay, so if um, we basically set our delta G's equal to each other. We end up with this being equal to this, okay? And if we manipulate the equation for our E naught value, we get RT over NF times LN of K, okay? So this uh, equation now gives us uh, a means to basically find cell potential with respect to um, our equilibrium constant. So if we just keep in mind uh, this equation and this equation, um, obviously we can see where the connector is um, with our delta G naught value. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's look at how we're going to utilize um, our uh, reduction potentials to calculate uh, delta G and K. Okay, so what they've asked us to do here in this problem is to calculate the standard free energy change. So they want us to calculate delta G naught and the equilibrium constant K at 298 for this specific reaction here. Okay, so in this case, we're actually going to be um, combining uh, the equation um, that we looked at uh, earlier um, along with the uh, equation that we, um, that we learned last unit um, that relates K and our delta G naught value. Okay, so uh, what we're going to go ahead and do here is very similar to the, the one of the problems we saw earlier. Um, we are going to get the reduction processes um, associated with the oxidation and reduction um, steps in the equation seen above here. Okay, so Ag is going to Ag+, plus, so it's actually being oxidized, it's giving up electrons. Okay, so the oxygen and the H+, plus are going to be being utilized um, as the reduction processes. So... Um, we're going to go ahead and find our reduction values on the um, reduction standard reduction potential chart. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and plug uh, these um, values into our equation seen here. We saw this earlier. Okay, so the value for our reduction process. Okay, the reduction process is here, so that number gets plugged into here. Um, the uh, cell potential reduction potential value for the um, oxidation process gets plugged in here. We go ahead and do the math here and we end up with 0.43 as our E naught for this overall process. Okay, we subsequently go ahead and plug that value in, okay, to our E naught for the equation here. Um, we plug in our constant and of course we plug in our um, number of uh, electrons that have been transferred. Okay, and we've managed that and, and established that through um, uh, the process seen here, okay, from our half reactions, uh, we do the math and we subsequently get our G naught value. Okay, so when we get that delta G naught uh, value, we can subsequently plug it into the equation we learned last unit. Okay, so E to the negative delta G naught, we're going to plug that in. Our RT, um, our 
constant r, rt at um, in Kelvin. Okay, we plug those numbers in. Guys, notice though that I plugged in the joules per mole here. Okay, remember we, our units for um, our r constant need to match whatever our delta g is. We plug those in, um, and we subsequently get a k value of 9 times 10 to the 29th. So basically, we can uh, apply these uh, relationship here that we see with our cell potential in order to establish information about our equilibrium constant.